yet, you know, uh, still, despite Ice Rider being a very known quantity, being something that everyone should be prepared for, is still rising to the top, and Kyle, being such a strong pilot of this team, uh, is making it into the finals, facing off against Rowan, uh, who's also an expert pilot of the Miraidon team, and we're seeing the repeat Miraidon versus Ice Rider finals again uh, in this third MSS at Windsor. Exactly. I'm sure you're a little bit biased here, Kazuki, because <laughs> you are a, a Maradon bit, fan. Yes, you have the Maradon team, very so much a Maradon fan. So, do you think that Rowan has it in him to maybe pivot this and win against this Ice Rider team? Yeah. Well, what's you know something to note about this Ice Rider team is that it actually has Amoongus and Rillaboom. This is going to be a rather uh, this is going to be challenging for Rowan to navigate, right? Because Amoongus, you know, you are okay with for the most part because you can just set up the electric train, be okay against that spore. But that Rillaboom, not only just being a nuisance from Raidon in general, can also just clear off the terrain, allowing for Amoongus to spore uh, things, a spore a team that otherwise, you know, is usually just built around the assumption that the electric train is going to be in place, so therefore, uh, it's a little bit light on a spore counterplay otherwise. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's looking really interesting here. Of course, we've seen that Pelipper as well. Mm -hmm. That's just so strong at shutting out yeah, fire cool. types. It has the Ghost Terra mm -hmm. type to escape the Shadow Tag, as we saw mm, a yes. little while ago. A very interesting play as well. Has so much going for it. Has the Hurricane, Focus Sash, the Tailwind, and the Wide Guard. Such a strong pick. Mm -hmm. There's also the Landorus on Kyle's side, right? Now, between Amoongus, Rillaboom, Landorus, it's going to be very difficult to click electric moves with uh, Maridon. Despite the fact that this Ice Rider is Terra Water, it's very tempting to just attack it with you know, a Discharge, an uh, Electric Drift, even a Volt Switch might be enough to just take out the, the Maridon or the Ice Rider if it has Terrasalized, but uh, having so much counterplay uh, to Maridon on this team between the Landorus and Moongus Rillaboom, uh, you know, this might be an uphill battle for uh, the Maridon. It's definitely an uphill battle from here on out, especially against that Calyrex Ice Rider. It needs that Trick Room, especially when Rowan has been relying on Trick Room with the Iron Hand so far to get these wins, to get to this spot. That ca that Ice Rider, I think, is definitely going to be moving first yeah, here that in Trick Room. Iron Hand seems like an MVP from what these games are showing us, right? Rowan just goes for the Trick Room uh, with the Bird Draft and the Iron, between the Iron Hands and the uh, Blood Moon or Saluna, like that's all, that's too much pressure for a lot of these teams to handle, but uh, Ice Rider is a Trick Room Pokemon. So, you know, it's gonna be interesting to see how this plays out. It's also interesting that Volcarona directly counters the typing of Calyrex Ice Rider has everything it needs to be able to deal with that. So it's going to try and get those early quiver dances. And Rillaboom going second here. Yeah, that's an interesting interaction or dynamic uh, for this matchup, right? You know, Kyle wants to bring Amoongus Rillaboom to you know, capitalize on Roan's lack of spore immunities, uh, relatively speaking. Uh, it, but bring two grass types into a Volcarona, I don't know if that's particularly appetizing for uh, Kyle. You might not want to do that, but you know, this Volcarona is the threat. This Bridon is also a threat still, uh, despite the, all the grass types. It can still go for Draco Meteors, and Draco Meteors from Bridon, <laughs> you know, they don't tickle, that's for sure. Yeah, here it is. They're not gonna tickle. No, sir, not at all. With this Terra Electric, electric Volt, Volt Switch coming switch. out, does as much as that Max Electric Regieleki as you were talking about. Ter uh, terrain, so it does not get the KO, oh. but if you saw that damage, if it was in terrain, that would have been uh, easily clearing through, so. Now, what do you pivot to if you're Rowan here? Do you try and set up the Tailwind? Do you try and play with the Iron Hands, expecting the Trick Room to come out? So many options. He's going to go with the Iron Hands, play for the Trick Room. Yeah, the Whimsicott is also a potential option there. It has Encore, so if the Iron Strider just stays in, it will get Encored into Trick Room. So it's a way for uh, Rowan to get a little bit of initiative, even as the Trick Room goes up. It'll force the Ice Rider to switch, uh, allowing Rowan to potentially just fire off a uh, boosted flamethrower onto the other slot, or just into Ice Rider uh, itself, right? Because you know that slot's not going to protect, and either 
switches, or well, you could protect, uh, but uh, you know that doesn't help you against the encore that's going to happen again. So, but just goes for the glacial lens, not even going for the trick room. And actually, the grassy terrain and leftovers is healing full Corona's health by one eighth of a turn. This grassy terrain is supposed to supposed to be a ride on counterplay, but is actually benefiting Rowan with the Volcarona. Though you can see why the Volcarona and Maridon they pair so well with each other. Uh, because you know you can bring your Maridon counterplay, but how, that's actually gonna help me. Yeah there's so much pressure here with this fake out. Now Flamethrower also threatening the Calyrex. It's probably going to protect on this turn, so maybe we're even going to see a switch out. Yeah, potentially. I don't know what's going to switch into this flamethrower, right? I you know I thought that uh, Kyle's going to go with a Moongus, Rillaboom, Calyrex, uh, Incineroar, or not Incineroar, right? right? Uh, Landorus. And, you know, if you notice, that's three fire weeks. Landorus being swapped out. Yes, Landorus, uh, although threatening the Iron Hands, is not going to do a lot of damage to the Volcarona, which uh, has boosted its special Oh, defense. switching out the Iron Hands because the Protect. Not even using the Fake Out. Yeah, that's a that's a trick that um, we should all uh, learn from, right? Yeah, that's a... Oh, and the Flamethrower wow. into the Calyrex, just removing that from the equation entirely. This, this Volcarona is looking unanswerable at this range. Like, what do you do? If you bring in the Rillaboom, the Mirana is going to switch in and prevent the Spore. If you bring in the Landorus, like, the Landorus is not particularly good into either of these Pokemon. Like, this is uh, this is looking a little dicey for Kyle, uh, despite uh, having a Ice Rider team seemingly designed to beat Maridon. Yeah, now this Among Us, oh. even if it Rage Powders here, it's going to be going down. It has to... Right into the... Moongus. Wow. This and goes it for it, right? Now, the Moongus could have just protected there, sure, but what that means is that Landorus is the only Pokemon that can attack that turn, and because of uh, Whimsicott's Focus Sash, you are guaranteed to uh, survive any attack that uh, Landorus goes for on this Whimsicott, and if you click Protect on the Moongus, it's just going to be an easy Encore the next turn. Exactly, there it is, forcing this situation yes, all in Rowan's favor. Volcarona just healing like it's a Gliscor with Toxic <laughs> Orb. Yeah, Volcarona in an amazing spot, just one Quiver Dance and it's set up to one-shot those key opponents. Yeah. And Rillaboom also weak to fire. Mm -hmm, yeah, just three fire weeks, just really, just not looking good. You know, Rillaboom could actually go for a fake out, but if you do that, then the Encore happens onto the fake out. Just Kyle is forced to attack with both Pokemon. He can't do anything else, or else the Encore just seals the game, just wraps it up. It's done if, you know, goes for anything else. So, is the Terra committed? Uh, we'll see what it's going to be. I think um, it's going to be on the Rillaboom would be my guess. Terrifier Rillaboom. Covering that yeah, flamethrower weakness. Covering the flamethrower weakness indeed. You know, if you're going to Terra something, uh, you better make it the Rillaboom, uh, I suppose, right? Like, how else are you going to beat the flamethrowers? Exactly. There's so much on the line here. You just need to be in this scenario to try and turn it around. Valkyrona using Protect. The double protect comes through. So that sand shear is not going to hurt as much. Mm -hmm. Now, one thing to note um, is that for uh, for the future, um, this Volcarona, although this Maridon terrestrialized early in the game, so this Volcarona is no longer able to terrestrialize, this Volcarona is Terra Ground. So even if that Rillaboom uh, Terra fires, right? now oh, wide open to a Terra Ground. So, you know, this Volcarona very much just pins everything this Rillaboom can do. And Kyle very much probably feels like he has to bring this Rillaboom into Maridon. He's built this team around the fact that you, you, you do that. That's just what you do. And now the Flamethrower just goes into the Landers. It's just an easy pickup. And this Rillaboom no longer resisting uh, electric moves. going to be uh, another easy KO from this Terra Crystallize Maridon. Exactly, there it is. Not very effective, but if it gets that special attack drop at any point, yeah, it's going to be absolutely massive. Wood hammer wow. times four resisted. We see that do maybe 15 to 20% of uh, Volcarona's health. Uh, the, major the majority of that just gets <laughs> healed the back up by Rillaboom's own grassy terrain. Yeah, but how long do you drag this out if you're on Kyle's side? You have one last Pokemon, and Rowan doesn't want to switch to even give his opponent yeah, the blood no of day here, but he's going to go for it anyways. Here, right? You could just, you know, what, what, how could this go wrong? 
right? Like, what could there go it is. wrong? And there it is. Okay. Swift game one here. Kyle, uh, you know, is down a game in grand finals. He needs to uh, find a way to adjust, but. Is this, is, do you think it's gonna be possible here? I think it's possible, anything's possible, but I think Rowan is just absolutely dialed in for yes. his team, his this game is a, plan, everything is flowing. To be something that he's practiced, he's, you know? He's had some falters, even mm -hmm. today, he's had some mistakes here and there, but he's learned from every yes. single mistake, and he's now just covering all those weaknesses his teams have. He knows what he should do into every single situation. He's faced teams like this before, even today. We've mm -hmm. seen him probably go up against one of these many Ice Rider teams, so he's ready for these exact occasions. The fact that he's not a Tarapagos or one of those spread move spammers, that Pelipper not getting as much value, especially mm -hmm. being weak to electricity as well. That's a very good well. point, actually. Yeah, the Pelipper is not going to do anything. The Pelipper is going to, you know, it's very telegraph what Kyle's gonna bring here, right? You know, you can basically rule out Pelipper for that reason alone, as you said, and Incineroar doesn't, you know, you probably, like, Incineroar, as you know, as you're aware, it just gets knocked out by Volt Switch, so, yep. you know, how, how does Kyle um, really adapt here is, is but, at the same time, Kyle has a lot of experience against Miraidon teams, I'm sure, and is able to... Oh, but there is the Pelipper indeed, in fact, and, you know, may, in fact, despite Pelipper not being too good into the Miraidon, is in fact good into the Volcarona, and, and just correctly identifying that, you know, this is... Pelipper is the key to victory against this Volcarona, otherwise I'm just gonna get run over like I did in the first game. Exactly, stopping that that fire flamethrower from being as effective as it is. We're gonna see the immediate switch out into Furgaraf. Furgaraf comes Try in, blocking the potential fake out, and the fake out curse. So that Rillaboom basically wasted a turn, and the Pelipper does not protect. So it just takes wow. a bolt switch and loses its focus sash really early turn one. But we'll see what this Pelipper goes for. This Pelipper can actually, uh, you know, spiral out of control uh, with between Tailwind and um, Hurricane, you know, a very high power uh, based move. And the Volcarona switches in. So if uh, Kyle actually went for the Hurricane into <gasps> the Volcarona, wow! Gets the one in KO. A critical hit to boot. Doesn't even matter at that point, but yeah, an that was an amazing turn read. One from Kyle, you know, we saw we saw the fake out come in, and you know that's that sounds that looks a little you know suspicious, right? Like uh, you you wasted a turn on the Rillaboom, but in a sense he just hedged his options here. He just clicked fake out and also just called the switch there. Uh, just you know either way, like something something's good is going to happen. Exactly, something good did just happen there. Now, Electro Turin though, making this Furgraph even more tanky against everything it can be thrown at. Now he has some interesting options here. Gonna go for the Draco Meteor yeah. onto the Reelaboom. That said, you know, Rhydon has terrain, is just going to go for the, well, it does not get the KO. It, you have to imagine that Kyle actually just, you know, trained his Rillaboom to take that always. Uh, exactly. He would probably most likely not let the Rillaboom take a Draco if that was not the case. And Kyle understanding that the Pelipper's job has been done. Yeah, Pelipper. Pelipper got the KO on the Volcarona. It is no longer needed. So he is more than happy to just click Tailwind or Hurricane on it even. Um, and just let it go down to those Terra Blasts that are about to hit. go its way. It goes for the uh, Hurricane and deals a decent amount of damage uh, and goes down, but this also provides an ad additional free switch for the Rillaboom. So, you know, Kyle really keeping himself in the game here. Um, with these Pokemon with that Pelipper adjustment that was very brilliant uh, in, um, in a lot of ways here. So the Calyrex comes in against this minus two Draco like this. this Rowan's just in the back, uh, is on his back foot here. He's on the back foot here. Now, things are not looking great. He has to try and turn things once again in his favor. Kyle doing absolutely massive work with that Pelipper, turning everything around in that single turn. His options yeah, here are pretty yeah. limited as well. But this Landorus actually has Sandy Sandseer Storm, and Sandseer Storm's really good into two additional, or just two uh, electric Pokemon left for um, Rowan here. Uh, and 
Actually, Landorus swaps out, um, trying to put itself in a better position uh, to clear through the Miraidon and what's most likely based on the game one uh, that he displayed the Iron Hands in the back as well. Exactly, and what move did he use? Draco Meter helping hand. Calyrex, it does a lot of damage despite being in out of terrain, uh, but takes a Glacial Lance in. Wow, the double, the double knockout, knockout with the Glacial knockout. Lance. Yeah, now the Iron Hands, so with the Rillaboom in play, it's gonna be an easy take out into uh, another attack even. Just the Iron Hands is not gonna be able to clear through this Landorus, so brilliant adaptation from Heil here, just really Showing that you know you you might have had that Volcarona there uh, and you know like got got me uh, on bringing three fire weeks here, but you know I actually have a rain mode. Did you know that I have a rain mode that I can <laughs> reduce the damage that fire types deal to me? So you know it's. It's it's your turn, Rowan. Like, how do you adapt to this? Exactly. The rain was an absolutely gain, game changing play, and he doesn't have anything to clear it. He doesn't have a sunset. He doesn't have yeah. anything to change it in his favor there. So uh, it's just an absolute massive play on the side of Kyle. On paper, you're like, why would you bring the Pelipper? It doesn't really mm -hmm. take anything specifically out, but it's weak to the lightning, and there's two lightning. Yeah, Drizzle but by itself is an amazing, amazing ability. Even if you had nothing else on the kit, yeah. just Drizzle, Tailwind, and you're good you at that point. You see this Pelipper, right? Pelipper is, a, is a basically just a Route 1 bird from Hoenn. I mean, you don't <laughs> expect that Pokemon to be uh, any good and competitive, but here it is, just really working its magic despite the fact uh, that it, its stats are very low. You know, it completely turned the game around against against the strongest electric type Pokemon in the game. That is isn't that so impressive? Yeah. Isn't that crazy to think about here? A Pelipper, you know, times four weak to electric. Uh, you know, I, I once ran the damage calcs on this uh, uh, accidentally. <laughs> An electric move from uh, Maridon <laughs> deals over 1,000% damage to Pelipper's <laughs> health. But despite that, Pelipper just turned the game around uh, uh, for this, uh, you know, for in favor of Kyle here. Yeah, no, Rowan hopefully has to learn from that game and maybe sends out a different lead as he knows this there Pelipper Rillaboom is Pelipper on the way. Rillaboom. Oh, it goes the same plan. And we'll see. So that Pelipper is going to be key here, right? This Kyle really needs that Pelipper, or at least the Drizzle, <laughs> to stay active in order to cover for the potential Volcarona impact, but it is also staring down two electric types. So how is this? How are we going to see this play out? Sorry, did, did he bring out a different exact same team? Because this is a shiny Iron Hands now. Oh, no, it was shiny before. Oh, it was? Yeah. Oh, I just never noticed. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> We're back in here, though. Already doing the same yeah, two Pokemon setup. Pokemon can click fake out. Um, Pelipper does protect here and, you know, doesn't want to lose the Focus Sash too early. By keeping the Focus Sash, it's going to be relatively difficult for a Rowan to remove it from play and it's very tempting to just double into it try to get this KO right because you know we saw this Pelipper work a lot of do do a lot of work um for Kyle that last game so but seeing that the Pelipper protected you know you can swap in either of your flying weak Pokemon without taking a hurricane so you know, at least in that sense uh this this uh, turn one bolt switch play into the Rillaboom worked out. It gives you a little bit more information on what Kyle is about to go for to base your decisions on. Yeah, you have uh, quite a few <laughs> big decisions to make from here on out. Calyrex already being brought out. He's Calyrex comfortable with the in. rain, the drizzle predicting him from the fire. Now wants to get the use out of the Calyrex. Now, when you look at the two Pokemon on Rowan's side, right? Like the Pelipper, you know, you don't want to just lose the Pelipper right away. I'm Sure, that like uh, Kyle's potentially considering swapping out this Pelipper that can't protect anymore because I used protect the previous turn right and right back into the rail boom, which isn't being threatened at all by a Whimsicott and uh, an Iron Hands, really. So, you know, it's like going to be a relatively uh, safe switch should he go for it, but actually, Pelipper stays in and launches a hurricane and, and it gets blocked out. But Rowan correct, correctly identifying that the uh, Kyle is going to want to just remove the threat of Encore. Uh, this protects 
and you know, decent, decent trade off here. Like Iron Hand, sure takes a little bit of damage, but I'd say the, the losing, getting the Pelipper all the way down into its Focus Slash in range for one more attack, uh, a Pokemon that really uh, gave Rowan a lot of trouble. Like that is a pretty decent trade off, I would say. Right? Um, yeah, that is definitely a decent trade, especially with getting the Electric Terrain up now. Rowan's in a decent position to do some massive damage. Yes, and because uh, Kyle went for two attacking moves here, the Whimsicott's Encore isn't going to do too much, right? Uh, you don't want to go for a Trick Room right in front of a Whimsicott and get Encore into it. So Kyle just attacks with both Pokemon, says, hey, like, you can you can Encore, I guess, but, you know, I'm just going to... It just means you take even more damage, so we'll see how this turn plays out here. The Pelipper switching out most likely into the Rillaboom. Yeah, you want to get rid of that electric terrain before that that Maridon can attack. The grass is out once again, reducing the damage just by a little bit, but he knows that's the case. So he went for a Draco Meteor. So what is this Draco Meteor gonna go into the Landorus? Ooh, the Landorus switching into what is potentially a Draco Meteor is gonna be an easy one to KO should it connect. It is a 90% chance, so there's still a 10% chance that this Landorus survives this turn. Yeah, this is an absolutely a massive 10%. Rowan needs this. This is do or die. He needs to pivot the game in Draco his scenario. Meteor, the animation goes off and the Landris goes down. So there goes Kyle's one electric immunity. He still has the real boom. Yeah, it's pretty decent uh, at taking electric hits from Maridon. And this Maridon is locked into Draco Meteor at minus two uh, special attack. So it's not too much of a, uh, not too much of a offensive threat at this moment, but, you know, it is still at full health. Uh, Rowan has all all two Pokemon left in the back to swap out to. He has a lot of options to uh, maneuver this um, right on out of play, get it back into play, and try to clear through. So you get to see the Protect, and, well, it's, it's going to be on Kyle to try to capitalize on this, right? Maridon's most likely going to switch out. This is a very obvious in Telegraph play, so, you know, when you see an opportunity for a Telegraph play like this, Kyle uh, has to try to capitalize this on as much as possible, uh, especially seeing that the Landorus just went down without a fight uh, that previous turn. Yeah, now gonna be blocking out. Wins the cut, gonna use the protect. The U-turn comes U -turn through. U-turn is risking the burn from Flame Body. Oh, oh there and he it gets is. it! Wow! And now this Rillaboom is going to be dead in the water in terms of damage, just going to really be that grassy terrain setter. Yeah, it's still valuable simply for the grassy terrain, right? So in the same way that Pelipper is still valuable despite its uh, not so great stats, uh, thanks to its drizzle ability. And Rillaboom still has Fake Out. All of that is still very potent next to a Calyrex Shadow or Calyrex Ice Rider uh, at home full health. So, you know, it's, you know, Kyle. Despite the bird, you know, can still get a lot of value out of that Rillaboom still. And the grassy terrain yeah, leftovers. Yeah, the grassy terrain is the, the Gliscor Volcarona there, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know but this Whimsicott being at full health. See, see the, uh, you know, compare and contrast the, the field here, right? Both, po both players have Focus Sash Pokemon, but one of them has already lost the Focus Sash, whereas the other is still intact. Oh, switching up the Pelipper. Interesting inter interaction here, and it, this Rillaboom comes right back in. This burned Rillaboom, and it's gonna take the Encore, so no longer gonna be able to set up the Trick Room. It's looking a little scary. Wow! Rillaboom, but thanks oh, the to rain. the Salt Fest and the rain, yes, the rain. It, it essentially means that this Rillaboom is not uh, weak to fire as, as long as the rain is. Yeah, it's going to be a very tough really boom there and nothing really there to stop him. Now the rain has stopped. We either need to see the, need to see the swap out to protect the Calyrex or we need to see something else happen here on Rowan's side. But he has all four Mons up still. He's still in a great position to try and take down Kyle. Kyle on the back foot here, especially with that burn as well. Yeah, that burn there negating the healing to have grassy terrain, right? You want to 
You know, you would hope that the Rillaboom stays as healthy as possible and grassy terrain is an important part of that, but now that it's burned, the grassy terrain, uh, even if it's active, is not going to actually help heal this Rillaboom. And, you know, Rillaboom swaps out, and that's just going to be another flamethrower that's going into the direction, potentially, uh, you know, losing one more Pokémon, losing another piece, losing just a little bit more flexibility to play out this endgame. And there goes the Moonblast, just taking out the Pelipper. Taking out the Pelipper, no more rain, now it's gonna just be this one last storm heading our He's way. Being... Oh! The burn! The burn on the Calyrex! How do you, now, at least here, right, you get the KO on the Whimsicott, you get you get one Nay here going, yep. uh, getting plus one here, but, uh, you know, I have one, one stage of attack boost, uh, that is, uh, you're dealing 150% more damage, but because of the burn, you're only, you only have that. You only, exactly. You're actually, you know, only dealing 75% of the damage that you'd otherwise be doing, so, you know, uh, the attack boost that came from that Grim Nay is not quite gonna cancel out the effect of that burn. Exactly, and now there's some options here. Groan has to play this one right. Gonna throw the Iron Hands first. And pretty decent Pokemon too. Very tanky is gonna be able to take the, the Glacial Lance uh, very well. That Calyrex is locked into Glacial Lance and, and is staring down two physical attackers that are burned. Do you, do you see a way for Kyle to come back from this? This uh, It's going to rely on a lot of luck here and a lot of perfect playing, but he's no. still Encore yeah. there at the Glacial Lance. So. Yeah, the Encore pressure has gone, uh, has oh, gone has. away to Kyle's credit here. And, you know, if there's any Pokemon that's capable of spinning out of control, it is the Calyrex. Uh, access to one of the strongest spread moves in the entire game with absolutely no downsides and getting, uh, you know, having an incredible uh, snowball -y ability to boot, but see the Railboom Terrasalize to fire. You wish that had occurred earlier because the fire terrasalization uh, would have pre prevented that burn earlier. Yeah, now you're just using for some. Ooh, fake out goes through. Iron Hand's not going to get the fake out on the Calyrex, so it's going to go off. Not going to do much of anything, especially in rain there. Mm, especially, yeah, but. Uh, they're both Pokemon barely hang out, but this is this is potentially scary for Rowan even still, right? If he takes out both next turn, that's two more chilling nays. Now he's above yeah, that two burn more point. more nays, three nays total, and you know, uh, Encore is about to run out soon. Uh, if Encore runs out and Trickum goes up and gets uh, those those nays going here, like that, that's gonna be an easy KO despite the the burn on the Mirhydon. So, you know, yeah, there it is. The Encore is over, and the, well, the Grassy Terrain is also over too. Um, you, uh, he, that means that both Pokemon uh, on Kyle's side are going to be taking damage each turn, but at the same time, the Volcarona is also not going to be healing either. Yeah, no. This is a lot on the line for Rowan. He was in the leading position. He has two burn Pokemon. Both players could e somehow spin this into a win. Terra Blast on Volcarona. Going to try and take out the real win. It does! And now it's, it's just a Calyrex remaining. Yeah, it, so I don't know how this is going to end. I don't know. This yeah. is going to come down to a duel between the restricted legendaries Can at this, this point. Can this Calyrex pull off the 1v3 sweep? It takes a lot of damage from that Drain Punch, but we'll, we'll see. We'll see what happens. I don't I don't know. I can't predict. I, I can't I either. I don't know what's going to happen. The Trick, the trick goes Room. Off. Is, Holy is it gonna smokes. Be is that... Iron Hand's gonna go down to a Glacial Lance. If it does, then that the Rhydon is not gonna be able to take another one potentially, right? It's exactly, there's so many factors at play here. And the Calyrex being slowly Kyle whittled away by this burn as well. One button to press. Kyle has one button. <laughs> he knows which button he's gonna click. Rowan knows what that button is, but it's on Rowan to see I just had an idea. <laughs> Never mind. I think Rowan is confident oh, against the train okay, punch because of the trick I, I, room he operates. And Kai Rowan, all the I, way from Atlanta, makes his trip worthwhile and wins the MSS right here, right now, with the one Draymond's Iron Hands for the win. Both players. Uh, you know, the Maridon versus Ice Rider finals comeback. <laughs>
uh, but Bryden takes it again, and but still, that was so impressively played from both players, you know. Rowan might have gone, like, ran away with the Volcarona game plan, game one, and, you know, I was just sitting here, I was just talking, right? Like, how does Kyle adapt? Like, can he adapt, <laughs> right? But, but he did, he, you know, that just speaks for how comfortable so Kyle is with his team. He knows that, he knows how to uh, address uh, new th new threats, um, improvise on the spot, and brought the Pelipper despite it being uh, you know, a pretty horrible Pokemon in general <laughs> or against the Rhydon. It actually, you know, almost clutched it in through. Exactly. And Kyle had an amazing run through this tournament as well, undefeated up until the very end. But Rowan, who had a little bit of the bumpier path to tread, the ups and downs, the highs, the lows, traveled all this way and finally came out with a win after three days of yeah. playing. He has won an MSS, gotten the coveted points, and <laughs> just watching him learn and adapt through each yeah. and every game he played was amazing to watch. So congrats to Rowan Hall for yeah, taking absolutely. this one. Absolutely, and congrats to Kyle, too. He played that very well, you know, going for plays that uh, subverted my expectations. And, you know, like, that's what you need to do to, you know, rise to the top. That's the mark of an excellent player. Excellently played on both ends here. You know. Yeah, and just to hype this up a bit more, <laughs> Rowan Hall is not going to Worlds yet, but he needed to win this one to have a chance of going to Worlds, so that dream is still alive for him. He has a few more chances here to make that invite happen, so congrats to Rowan and congrats to everybody else who played in this tournament. It was an amazing day full of Pokemon. Congrats to Kazuki as well for winning <laughs> the other day. Thank you very much for joining me here oh, on the desk. Thank you for having me. It was a lot of fun to be up here and, you know, <laughs> It's an awesome experience. <laughs> and, uh, these games were so intense. There are a lot to talk about. There's a lot to analyze. I couldn't say all the <laughs> things that I had in mind, right? Like that moved so quick, mm -hmm. right? It was so much fun it having was so here. So dynamic. We saw the adjustments. You know, we saw we saw the game plans. Game one, how they played out, and then we saw the adjustments. Game two, and then we saw the adjustments to the adjustments. And a lot of these exactly. games threes, these these best of threes that we saw today, have been very exciting to watch and commentate over. So you know, thank you for all like having me here and thanks for all the players for putting on such a great show because at the end of the day it's going to be on the players who put up the show and in fact they yeah, they did, you know. They did, and that was, that is it for today. That is all we have to show. But thank you very much for joining me up here. It was a joy to have you. Thank you, everybody, for watching. And join us again tomorrow at 8 a.m. We have one more Pokemon tournament in store for you, so make sure to tune in, and we'll see you on there. Get a good night, everybody, and we'll see you tomorrow.